I wanted to do this follow-up supplemental video to the TED Ed project I recently worked on that was released a few weeks ago. The link is in the comment section below in case you haven't seen it. But a question was repeatedly raised to me after it was released uh, as to why it's necessary to consider such an abstract application, uh, the, the link between the Rubik's Cube and music, and so I wanted to address that. And basically, it's not necessary. Uh, most people are completely fine not knowing why or how things work. For instance, by trial and error you can find that adding creamer to your coffee slows down the rate of uh, cooling. You don't need to study thermodynamics to figure that out, but if you want to know why, then a physicist will tell you that the level of viscosity affects its rate of evaporation. And so while most people don't care, for those who do, if you're like me, you're not satisfied with just knowing that a chord progression works and some others don't. You want to know why things work uh, that way. So the purpose of that TED Ed video was really first to uh, open people's minds up to the idea that everything is connected through mathematics, even seemingly unrelated topics like art and science. And secondly, <clears throat> to, to show the beauty of math, uh, that it's not just about numbers, it's about patterns and logic. And so, uh, an, while an auto mechanic may not need to understand the mathematical principles governing a combustible engine, by studying those things, he's only going to enhance his appreciation and knowledge of the processes involved. And so in music, we study things like the Euler line and the golden ratio, which appear in, in music. It only enhances our appreciation for the beauty of music as well as math.